Wait, no, there's a dog in the car. Dog in the car? There's a dog in the car. Oh, oh my god. Where's it at? It's put in the back. Right here. Right here? Yeah. Oh, Hank, come on, man. Hank. Is it unlocked? Yeah. It's, a, it's some sort of manual lock. It's right here. Come on. Hank, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on! Come on! Oh my god! 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 Oh my you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I take great pride in not letting much get to me and not getting excited very often, but uh, that video got me. And uh, we just wanted to introduce you to the amazing deputy that was able to get in and save that dog. Deputy Gregoric, that was awesome, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so cool to be able to actually watch you go in and save that dog. But you want to tell us a little bit about what it was like coming into that situation and being able to provide that service. You, you mentioned a minute ago when we were talking that you weren't even expecting it to be a, a normal fire. What were you thinking? Uh, yeah, no. Um, so I was just dispatched to a vehicle fire. Um, you know, first thoughts going into any call. Uh, where's the car? Is it in a garage? Is it out front of a house? Is it, you know going to spread to a house? Are there people in it? Are there animals in it? Um, what's the cause of the fire? You know, you're working through, is it a crime? Is it not a crime? Just on your way to the call, because dispatch can only give you so much. Um, once I arrived on scene, uh, first thing I see is a gentleman who ended up being the owner of the vehicle and the owner of the dog, um, throwing something at the back of the vehicle. And about a month prior, uh, my team had made an arrest for somebody who was throwing Molotov cocktails at the car. So my first thought is, okay, do I have this going on? I get out of the car. Um, everybody's kind of pointing at that gentleman. And then he starts screaming, my dog's in the car. And that, I mean, you know, flip switch from, it's obviously not a crime. And now we have a life. And That's a big switch, though, thinking that this could be a, a real crime happening and some real damage happening to, I got to save a dog. Right. Um, so, and then, so what do you do? Uh, the video shows, and it's pretty quick, that you were breaking the windows out. What did you use to break the windows out? I uh, used my ASP. ASP, okay. Yep. And that's so. generally what the ASPs are used for these days, or the retractable batons, right. is to be able to break out windows and that kind of deal, because yep. we have a lot of other tools for other reasons. But um, you get that back window broken out, and we see the dog come out just salivating, obviously struggling. What are your thoughts there? Um, yeah, you know, dog is, you know, starts calling Hank. Hank comes out to the back window. Um, he's salivating. You can tell that he's in distress. Um, owner was trying to pull him out. Uh, not successfully. He, I didn't, obviously, you know, that's his baby. I'm not going to get in his way while he's trying to rescue his baby. But the second he opens up an opening for me, I just... Um, went in there and grabbed on and uh, his, his body had already kind of started to tense up. Uh, so I knew he was really in a bad way. And so my thought only at that point was he's coming out with me regardless of, you know, whatever else might be happening, smoke or fire or um, nothing else really mattered at that point other than getting, getting Hank out of the car. So. <laughs> so you get him out, you ran him over to the uh, snow, you call to the firefighters letting them know the dog's out. Nothing, and the, it's clear at that point. Yep. Right? And uh, at that point, we hear you, you coughing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a dangerous situation, but... Um, thankfully, one of the neighbors, um, he had actually brought me over some water uh, to drink because he obviously saw me coughing, and he had told me that his wife, who had just ran to the grocery store, who would be home soon, uh, she was a vet. So we put her, uh, Hank in the backyard, waited for her to get home, and... She checked him out, checked his gun, gums, and by the time she had actually gotten home, he was already sprinting around the backyard ready to play. So I went over and gave him a good pet, and he's, he's good. He's got to assume you're just a huge dog lover or something like that, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, as tacky as it is, as it is to say I'm a, a dog parent, but that's <laughs> my only child is my dog. So I would have done, you know, the same thing, whether it be baby, human, dog, cat, you know, life is a life, and 
kind of treated as such in a situation like that. So. Well, i got to say, man, you're my hero. That was awesome to watch, and I'm sure everybody out there, you, you'll probably agree that uh, Deputy Gregor did a fantastic job saving that dog, and it's cool to hear and see that you would do that for anybody out there. So absolutely. thank you so much, man. What a great video. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. So, all right, thanks. <laughs> hey, um, just for you guys, just to let you know, we're going to go ahead and do a ride along with Deputy Gregoric in, in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to go ahead and uh, let you get to know him a little bit better and uh, get you to know a little bit about what our patrol does. He's on what swings right now? Uh, yep, swings on the B side of the week. So, all right, we'll Wednesday go see what kind of trouble we can get into or keep everybody out of, huh? All right, thanks so much, everybody, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.